Hello, everyone. My name is Christopher Sharkey. I'm an undergraduate researcher in the Biointerface Lab at NC State University. And today I will be discussing our work thus far on electrochemical control of pH or regeneration of biosensors. So regeneration is a way of taking an affinity-based biosensor that has already been used and renewing it such that additional measurements can be taken. And this has the potential to address a lot of the major shortcomings that currently exist with affinity-based devices. These shortcomings are evident when we compare affinity-based biosensors to catalytic biosensors, such as the ones you see on the left. These continuous glucose monitors measure blood glucose fluctuations with high temporal resolution. And as a result, they have incredible utility for diabetes management. But the affinity-based biosensors that we see on the right are almost always single-use devices. Um, we can now engineer affinity-based receptors to detect virtually any biomarker of interest but because these devices are only capable of one analyte measurement, we typically see them being used for things like pregnancy tests and virus detection, where a one-time yes or no diagnosis is sufficient. Um, so biosensor regeneration makes it possible to take these single-use devices um, and use them continuously, which may lead to longitudinal monitoring with affinity-based devices. And regeneration is all about controlling binding affinity, um, which I'll briefly go over. So the amino acids that compose receptors and ligands are fundamentally either polar, nonpolar, positively charged, or negatively charged. So once these molecules fold into their complex structures, their external surfaces have regions that are positively charged, regions that are negatively charged, and so on. And affinity is the intermolecular interaction of these different regions on complementary molecules, where, for example, um, an antibody with a negatively charged region is attracted electrostatically to a positively charged region of its complementary antigen, and as a result, binding between the two is favored. Environmental factors also influence binding affinity, um, such as temperature, solvent composition, and pH. In the case of pH, as we add or remove protons from solution, um, these charged molecular regions can be protonated or deprotonated which changes their charge state um, and causes this electrostatic attraction to no longer occur. There was a review paper by Good et al. that summarized successful biosensor regeneration studies. Um, and there's been some limited success with techniques like temperature control and using chemical detergents. But the most successful approach thus far typically uses an acid or base to control pH. And while this is a promising approach, um, it has some drawbacks, such as requiring additional chemical reagents and potentially an operator to handle these chemicals. So it's somewhat impractical in the point of care and in vivo diagnostics context. And one approach to this is the utilization of palladium's ability to reversibly absorb protons. We've seen a lot of applications of this from hydrogen storage to pH sensors to catalysis and bioreactors. Uh, but somewhat recently, we've also seen applications in the field of biosensors. Stracosis's research group demonstrated that palladium electrodes can be used to induce pH changes within biologically relevant conditions. Um, and they developed non-enzymatic glucose sensors using these electrodes, where pH changes caused by these electrodes resulted in measurable glucose oxidation. We thought it would be interesting to take this property of palladium and apply it to pH-based regeneration. So the system we used was a two electrode electrochemical cell with a palladium working electrode and a silver silver chloride reference electrode. Before attempting regeneration with this system, we performed some characterization experiments where we applied different voltages to the system with sodium chloride as the electrolyte and recorded the change in pH. We characterized this system in a couple of different volumes and normalized the amount of palladium surface area. Um, in these first experiments, we applied DC potentials of various amplitudes, and throughout these experiments, a negative potential on the working electrode caused solution to become basic, and a positive potential caused solution pH to become acidic, as protons are respectively attracted and repelled from the working electrode. And there's a few additional trends we see here. Um, first and foremost, the overall change in pH and the rate of change are proportional to the amplitude of the applied voltage. We also see that a smaller solution volume results in a greater overall change in pH, despite normalizing that palladium surface area. And another interesting trend here is that it is much easier to make solution basic in response to a negative potential than it is to make solution acidic in response to an equivalent positive potential. 
Um, next, we apply varying potentials and alternated polarity every minute. And these same trends are present. Um, the favorability of making solution basic with the system is really evident here as we see pH increase. But this difficulty with making solution acidic is a pretty big problem if we want to use this system for biosensor regeneration because a lot of ligand receptor complexes tend to dissociate at an acidic pH. Um, to address this issue, we tried first conditioning the palladium electrode by placing it in dilute hydrochloric acid and applying negative one volts. So in theory, by first conditioning the electrode, uh, much more protons will be stored within palladium than in previous experiments. And after conditioning the electrode once, we tried to make solution acidic in response to positive one volts for three sequential trials. In the first trial, the drop in pH nearly doubles. And with each subsequent um, trial, the overall drop slightly diminishes, indicating that those excess protons gained during charging are slowly being depleted over time. So by incorporating a reservoir of protons into this system, we can drastically increase the system's capacity for acidic changes. And next we use this system for biosensor regeneration. Through these experiments, we wanted a receptor ligand complex that has been shown to be pH dependent. So we selected the HWRGWB peptide as the receptor. Um, this peptide is used for antibody purification due to its high affinity for human IgG antibodies. And the affinity between the two is pH dependent, where at a lower pH, they tend to dissociate. So knowing that we should see pH specific binding and dissociation, we use this recognition scheme. And after functionalizing our electrodes, um, we applied an anti-fouling layer and fluorescently labeled our target analyte so that we could use fluorescent imaging to quantify each step of regeneration. And after exposing these sensors to the target analyte, we tested some different regeneration techniques. As a positive control, we used glycine and hydrochloric acid. Um, this is a really popular reagent for regeneration, so it's a gold standard of sorts to compare our approach to. We used plain PBS as a negative control. This is a pH stable buffer, so we are expecting to see essentially no analyte dissociation. With the palladium approach, we performed regeneration in both dilute sodium chloride and in PBS just to see how different buffering capacities affect the system's utility. Um, and finally, we also performed regeneration with these same electrolytes using hydrochloric acid um, instead of palladium to change pH to see how equivalent these two approaches are. Um, here you can see some fluorescent images from these experiments. So we're expecting some initial fluorescence with the first exposures to the ligand. Um, after regeneration, we wanted to see a decrease in fluorescence and upon re-exposure, a subsequent increase in fluorescence. Uh, luckily, that is consistent with what we observed or else this would be an incredibly disappointing lecture. That was a joke. Um, and here you can see that with the negative control of PBS, very little analyte dissociation is occurring. And for the positive control of glycine and hydrochloric acid in the middle, full analyte dissociation occurs. Um, when we re-exposed the sensors to the analyte, force and intensity actually increased above its original value. We think this is due to non-specific ligand binding um, that occurs after partial loss of the anti-fouling layer or partial sensor, sensor damage during regeneration. But using the palladium approach and sodium chloride, extensive dissociation occurs with fluorescent intensity reaching just 9% of its original value. While this is slightly less effective than regeneration with positive control, uh, we think it's a promising result. And with further system optimization, we can probably make this an even more attractive approach. When we compare palladium to hydrochloric acid regeneration, both in the electrolyte of sodium chloride, um, we see very similar results, which indicates that the regeneration caused by acidic-based pH change and palladium-based pH change are fairly equivalent. And with PBS as the system electrolyte, less overall regeneration occurred due to the greater difficulty of changing pH in a buffered solution. But again, we see that chemically induced and palladium induced dissociation are fairly equivalent, um, indicating that essentially the same thing is happening between the two systems. So overall, these experiments show that palladium-based regeneration is viable and can likely be improved with further work. And speaking of further work, there's a lot of additional things that we're doing with this system. First is regenerating different types of biosensors. So we saw success with a pH specific receptor ligand complex, um, but we want to test various receptors and ligands to see how ubiquitous this system is in biosensor regeneration. 
We also want to take electrochemical measurements in tandem with fluorescent images. This would confirm the system's utility for electrochemical biosensors and provide additional insights into the extent of functionality lost during regeneration. We're also working to integrate this system within microfluidics devices to see how extensively pH control cont continues to improve as system volume decreases. And lastly, a huge motivation behind this work is developing affinity-based systems that can be used continuously. Um, so we're working to integrate this system with in vivo affinity-based subcutaneous biosensors. Here you can see an electrode array that we're developing in our lab. Um, it has electrodes for biomarker measurement and a palladium electrode to induce pH-based regeneration. If we deploy a system like this in skin models or in animal studies and consistently achieve regeneration, we may be one step closer to continuous in vivo affinity-based biosensing, which really excites me personally. Um, these are the members, collaborators, and sponsors of our lab. I'm grateful for their continuous support. With that, I'd like to thank you all for your time.